League play and competitive COD 101. The basics of COD Esports and how to play competitive Call of Duty. We're talking about that all today. We're gonna be answering a lot of questions about competitive COD, what it takes to be fantastic at the game, and a lot more. And guys, I am very excited to get into this. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's go. So the biggest question is where do we even start? There is so much to talk about when it comes to understanding competitive COD. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but hopefully we'll help you get there today. And then once that starts clicking for you, you're gonna start dominating inside of league play. And that's what we're going for today. So of course there are a handful of things that are at the foundation of competitive COD. Obviously there's like the skills, the communication, the ability to trade with your teammates, mini map awareness, movement, gun skill, aiming, all of those types of things, of course, help you and make you a better Call of Duty player. Then of course, there's the factor of different game modes, Hardpoint, s and Control, and how those different skills work in those game modes, small different strategies for each type of game mode, each map, and how that works. And again, for the game modes, Hardpoint, s and Control, I actually have different videos on the channel explaining the basics of all of those game modes. I have a Hardpoint 101 video, an s and D 101 video, and a Control 101 video that you can go check out. And those explain all the basics of all those game modes and what are important to do inside of all three of those modes and I highly recommend that because I think there's a lot of really good details in there to help you guys improve as well so after this video I highly recommend go checking those ones out as well and then you have to have an understanding of the roles in competitive Call of Duty and how that plays with certain rules that competitive COD has as well including gentlemen's agreements. So real quick, we'll go through some of the fundamental skills of competitive COD. So you have a better understanding of what makes a good COD player. And then we'll go and talk about more about the game mode specifically, the roles of COD, and then some of the weird rules like gentlemen's agreements, other things like that, score streaks and all those types of things as well. So I'm sure you've heard the term communication is key. And that is definitely true with Call of Duty as well. There is so much built upon the importance of communicating in game with your teammates. So when you're playing league play, I highly recommend you got your mic plugged in you're talking with the boys who are on your team if you're solo queuing or you're playing with a squad and communicating with your buddies making the plays with your team. So of course, you've got to start learning the call outs on the maps. You've got to start communicating certain things about where you're looking, where the opposing team is looking. We have full on videos on the channel about communication. So I highly recommend going checking those out. And I'm sure I'll post more in the future as well, specifically about a lot of those things. A player's ability to react while listening and to react while talking are extremely important. And it truly is a crucial skill for every COD player, as well as your ability to play with your teammates. So trading and baiting kills is something you're gonna hear a lot about when you're playing league play. And basically that means when your teammate dies, you kill the person that killed your teammate. Or when you die, your teammate is killing the person that killed you. Being the bait or baiting is the person who goes first into the gunfight. The opposing teammate will shoot at you and then your teammate comes in and trades that kill, which means the teammate baited you by using you as the bait and killing the opposing player. But that is all part of competitive COD and a crucial feature in all three game modes to effectively and efficiently getting kills and learning to play off of your teammates in that way and doing that at a fast pace is a big part of what makes great players so great. And it sounds easy to do on the surface, but trust me, it's definitely not. And it takes a lot of time and practice to get good at. And that's something you just got to continue to be aware of while you're playing league play. Similarly, that mini map awareness is something that's incredibly important. And we talk about this so much and learn from the pros videos that we do, breaking down pro players gameplays. And it's basically the ability to check the mini map and react immediately based off the mini map, whether that's understanding that the positioning that your team has looking at the mini map will cause the opposing team to spawn in a different place or whether that's realizing that your team doesn't have a certain area or line of sight watched that could cause your flank to get hit or something along those lines or it's just a positional thing where you need to be in a good spot based off your teammates positioning and your mini map awareness to be in a spot to help your teammate trade those kills and be in a spot where you and your teammates can play with each other in that way. All of those types of aspects are incredibly important. Of course, reacting to, to gunfire on the map, something that is important in pubs as well, and reacting to the red dots on the main map is something that's very important. And all of those aspects take a long time to really get incredible at, like where the pros are at, and uh, that's something to be aware of as a skill that really does make you better as well. Then of course, there are the gunfight aspects of Call of Duty. Your movement and your ability to control your recoil and your aiming are obviously crucial to a player's success inside of competitive COD as an individual. So ironing down your movement, which is something that we have a lot of videos about on the channel, is definitely important seeing how the pro players play and how they move is very, very important to try to mirror that in your ways. Using slides, slide cancels, jump shots, drop shots, whatever it is to your advantage, mantling, 
how you manipulate the environment around you is all very important inside of a gunfight. And then of course, how you control your recoil and your centering, which is something we talk about on the channel a lot. We have a video specifically about centering as well on the channel. Long story short, centering is basically where you are aiming your screen at all times and making sure that you center your screen where the opposing team is most likely to be. Those types of attributes and how you aim and how you control your recoil are things that pros are so good at and you can be good at as well. And also a big factor for why you're winning or losing gunfights in the first place. So of course there's overarching strategies that very much differ depending on the game mode you're playing. Whether you're playing hardpoint or control or search and destroy, there's different strategies, skills, and things that you need to do with your team that each game mode rewards in different ways. And that's why each game mode takes a long time to master in itself. And there's some people who only play search and destroy. There's some people who barely play search and destroy and they specialize in respawn game modes. And, and, and it's all over the spectrum inside the competitive scene. But there's also different roles or expectations about what certain players are supposed to do, depending on the game mode, depending on the map, depending on the hard point hill, depending on which bomb site you're going towards, whatever it is, there's a lot of variables inside of strategies and things that you're expected to do, depending on the situation. And that takes a lot of time to learn. And that might seem really like, like a weird concept, but trust me, the more that you play, the more you realize that that definitely is the case. And it, and it very much varies depending on the situation, the map, the mode, whatever it is. The context is very important when it comes to those types of things as well. And then when it comes to the roles themselves, these are something that are incredibly difficult. And we're gonna do a whole video about roles inside of competitive Call of Duty. And that video will be coming out in the next week as well. But in short, there's different positions and there's different roles in competitive COD. You could say the positions are based off the gun that you're using. So whether that's an SMG, a flex, or an AR, so if you're using an SMG full time, if you don't always use an SMG, sometimes you use an AR inside of respawn game modes, then you're a flex. And if you prefer to only use an AR, then you're an AR, which is pretty straightforward. But inside of those positions, there's actually roles that those players could play depending on the type of player that you want to be. So now that we're in 4v4 again, based off 5v5 the last two years, the roles have changed a little bit. So a way to think about these roles are basically things that have to happen around the map. So some of the role titles that are given to these types of jobs is Slayer, Main AR, Support, Entry, some call another one like a route man, OBJ. There are different types of things that need to happen throughout a Call of Duty game. Those are assigned into roles like that. So generally a Slayer would be played by an SMG or a Flex player. Main AR of course is played by a Main AR. And then Entry is played by an SMG usually. Support is usually an SMG. It could be a Flex depending on the map. Then there's like jobs like route man who are out there trying to like secure the spawns for a new hill. And then OBJ is generally like a guy who likes to prefers to play around the hill, but that used to be like a solidified role. Nowadays, it's much different and not necessarily a role anymore, but something that all players do. And then of course, in SD, there's someone who carries the bomb. But before snipers were GA'd, there, you know, there's generally a guy who would usually snipe or things along those lines. But those are kind of the ideas of roles and jobs that players need to do inside the game. We'll break those down more again in a future video, which he did a video for that in the Modern Warfare, but we're doing a Black Ops Cold War version of it in this week, like I mentioned, to really further explain the jobs of every single role and how that plays out inside of different game modes and what that could look like for you and your team. So be on the lookout for that video. But those are incredibly important to understand in the long term for figuring out where you fit in to a map and how you can help your team and the jobs that need to happen throughout a hard point map or throughout a search and destroy or throughout a control map to help your team win. And that's really important to understand, especially when you're solo queuing so that you can identify where your team is lacking or what jobs are missing. And then you can help fill that void and do that for your team. And that really does work out well for myself is how a league play, so I recommend it for you as well. So again, the other aspects of competitive COD are basically gentlemen's agreement. So you'll see that a lot of things are like banned or not able to be used inside of league play. And that's because the pros play on a different rule set than, than pubs do as a whole. So part of that is gentlemen's agreements. These are things that players decide, all right, these aren't competitive or things need to be changed to be more competitive. So how can we play this in a more competitive way? And the pros decide to follow these things without officially implementing them into the rules because they can be difficult to implement. So for example, that would be something like only three of the four players are allowed to use trophy systems. One player can't use trophy systems because Treyarch is not very good at balancing the trophies. And so there's either too many 
trophies on the map or whatever it is. And so the pros decided that, okay, only three players are gonna be running trophies. So at the higher levels of rank play, you'll see that people will really be strictly following gentlemen's agreements. And so only three players on the team would be using their trophies, not the fourth. When pros or elite amateurs are playing against each other, that stuff is all assumed when they're going into the match. Similarly, the only two score streaks that are being used would be the cruise missile and the artillery strike. Besides that, no other streaks are used. And before there were preset loadouts, there was actually even more GAs because there was a lot of different attachments that you that were GA'd or whatnot. But nowadays, because of the preset loadouts inside of league play, that a lot of that's fixed, but that is a reason for why the preset loadouts exist. And I made a whole video about preset loadouts and the best ones to use. It just was posted a day or two ago. So go check that one out as well. But all of those things are important to understand. And those loadouts are specifically used by different roles inside of the main AR, the Slayer, the SMG, the support. And those all things come into play when playing different game modes as well. So there are a lot of small things that make a big time difference in the long term inside of competitive COD matches. And those are all important to understand as well and get a grasp for as you continue to play inside of league play. So of course, there is so much more that we could talk about. So many more individual skills that pros are so good at and things that we could talk about infinitely in this video. But I've got a lot of other videos on the channel, specifically, like I mentioned, Hardpoint 101, SD 101, Control 101, the basics for those game modes. Then we have the loadouts video. We have videos about gentlemen's agreements where you can go and see the whole list of all gentlemen's agreements. And of course, there's so many learn from the pros about how pros play together, how they play for spawns, how they communicate, how they trade kills, the mini map awareness, so many other things that make pros so good. We do a lot of breakdowns, have a lot of tips videos on the channel already about those things. So I highly recommend you go check those out. I'm not just promoting because I truly believe that those will help you become a better league play, better competitive Call of Duty player, and you can join the Discord to meet other people who love competitive COD as well. So I, I'd highly recommend that. And I really do appreciate you guys checking out the video. If you guys enjoyed it, learn something new, like, comment, subscribe, share the video if you guys really enjoyed it. I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Salvation's Elite. So I would, I would love to see you in the Twitch channel as well. But as always, guys, I'm your boy Salvation's Elite, and we will see you next time. I'm out.